We are back on the North Sidebound YouTube channel. My name is Greg Huss, and today we are back with another prospect profile. Today we're talking about Matt Shaw, the draft pick from the 2023 uh, MLB first year players draft. If you guys are looking for other prospect pro profiles, go check out. I've already done one on Pete Crow Armstrong. I've done one on Kevin Alcantara. I've done one on Owen Casey, and I've done one on Jefferson Rojas. So there's plenty there. Go check out those on the North Sidebound YouTube channel. But today, like I said, we're here to talk about Matt Shaw and the crazy performance that he had in 2023, what put him on the map. Uh, I have him as the sixth-ranked prospect in the Cubs farm system. I'm probably a little bit lower than most people are on him. I've seen him as high as number two um, in the Cubs organization. So today we're going to talk about Matt Shaw in five kind of steps here, right? We're going to talk about, one, his performance statistically in 2023, and we're going to follow that up by talking about his strengths, his weaknesses, his potential outcomes at the major league level, and then the timeline in which we expect to see him in Chicago. So let's go ahead and dig into what we saw from him offensively, uh, statistically, in 2023. These are his minor league numbers. We saw 159 plate appearances from Matt Shaw between high A and double A, and just put up downright ridiculous numbers. Right? You look at the slash line, 349 batting average, 384 uh, on-base percentage, 590, 597 slugging, that 981 OPS is wild. It's good enough for a 136 OPS. You'll see down OPS plus. You'll see down here in the advanced stats. The bash was better than Jefferson Rojas put up, and Jefferson Rojas had the best in the organization in terms of bash um, in 2023 with a minimum of 300 plate appearances. Obviously, Matt Shaw was way under that threshold, but 136 is pretty impressive. 170 WRC plus. He refused to swing and miss. He never swung and missed. 7.7% swing strike rate is one of the most ridic ridiculous stats I've ever seen. Uh, that helped limit the strikeouts to only a 15.1% strikeout rate. He also didn't walk hardly at all, but like when you're batting 349 and refusing to strike out, like why why draw walks? Uh, the the uh, extra base numbers were crazy and 159 plate appearances, eight doubles, four triples, seven home runs. Crazy, crazy numbers from the, 20, from the now 22-year-old uh, as a 21-year-old in pro baseball in his first taste after being drafted uh, back in July. So now that we've dug into the stats specifically, let's talk about what makes Matt Shaw so good. So I'll, I'll start off by saying that Matt Shaw, in my eyes, has probably the best feel to hit in the entire organization. It's a, it's kind of a, a two-horse battle between Matt Shaw and James Trion. So it's just Matt Shaw's ability to put the bat on ball is tremendous. And part of that is like, his ability to get the bat on the same plane as the ball and continue to leave the bat in the zone for as long as humanly possible to make contact with that pitch. Um, it is, it is wildly, wildly impressive how he can make contact. But from a guy like me who did not follow the draft nearly as closely as I have in past years, what really stood out as a strength for me with Matt Shaw was his ability to have home run over the fence power to the opposite field. That is not something I expected. I expected a guy who could play defense at multiple positions and could put the bat on the ball and very like Nico Horner, like Nico Horner is going to be a trend that you see throughout the entirety of this video here. Uh, but what Nico Horner does not have is he has that ability to make a ton of contact. You look at these, the average and the contact and the swing strike and the the lack of walks and the, the, the lack of strikeouts, like those numbers look a lot like you see from Nico Horner at the major league level. Matt Shaw has that. The difference is, is that Matt Shaw also has the ability to put the ball over the fence that Nico does not really have. So like that offensive profile is a major strength of Matt Shaw that looks even more promising than what we see from Nico Horner at the major league level. However, we'll get into weaknesses here because there's weaknesses that Matt Shaw has that Nico does not have. Yeah, so, so with Matt Shaw defensively, I think that like, what you see with him is a guy that is not as skilled defensively as a guy like Nico Horner. Um, I think the athleticism is absolutely there with Matt Shaw. I don't expect him to be a shortstop long-term. You see, as a pro, once he debuted, he had 57% of his games were spent at shortstop, 29% were at second base, and then 14% were, were at DH, which is not, not relevant to this conversation. But... I think that like long term, you've been you've been hearing a lot about Matt Shaw as a third baseman, both short term in Chicago and long term, maybe too, considering that the Cubs have two guys named Nico and Dansby playing playing second and short up the middle. So 
Uh, I think that Matt Shaw athletically has enough athleticism to kind of be bounced around from short to second to third to even the outfield, I think would be perfectly fine with Matt Shaw. But just remember, there's less skill there. So um, I think that like in terms of potential, that set the, the strengths that I've kind of discussed and the weaknesses sets up, us up for a good conversation about Matt Shaw's potential outcomes. So in an ideal world, you're looking at Matt Shaw being a guy that is Nico Horner, but better on offense um, and competent enough to play an average third base defensively at the major league level. That is a wildly, wildly impressive uh, profile, a pr an impressive guy to be on, to have on your major league team, all-star caliber level, right? For a guy to hit for power, to hit for a lot of average um, and deal the man third base. On the downside, I think the floor you're looking at with Matt Shaw, you're worried about that defensive profile, right? If he does not have the skill to be a average third baseman or average second baseman or average left fielder or right fielder, then like, what do you, I think that he does have enough to, to, to be a good, um, I, I think he's a safer bet to bounce around and be a utility man than a guy like Christopher Morrell, where Christopher Morrell is a very like electric player, right? Very, very athletic, but also kind of like showing off the cannon with his arm, like showing off crazy amounts of speed, skill like that. I think Matt Shaw seems like a guy that can just be more average, right? Christopher Morrell feels like a guy that is is either below average or below, or above average, no in between. Matt Shaw, I think, can be average across the board. However, what I'm really worried about with Matt Shaw is right now you'll see that ground ball rate is north of 45%. Um, his swing plane lends itself to hit a lot of ground ball, line drives and ground balls, not hitting the ball in the air as much as you'd like to see. And so offensively, if Matt Shaw does not continue to hit for power over the fence or gaps, gap to gap doubles as he continues to go up to AAA and major leagues, then you're looking at an offensive profile that looks a lot like current Nico Horner, but without the defensive value. And so like that's just a far less valuable player overall. You got to have that offensive value be more than what Nico is providing, considering that the defensive value will not be nearly as gold glove caliber as Nico Horner. So that's kind of the differences in where you could see Matt Shaw both short term in Chicago and long term. But let's talk about when we might see him there. So Shaw ended the year getting that cup of coffee in double A Tennessee, 70 plate appearances. He batted almost 300 during his time there. I think we likely see Matt Shaw in 2024 start off the opening day roster on that double A Tennessee team. So I think he'll be back in double A Tennessee. And then at that point, like we're talking about, we're talking about a really fast riser up through the system. Um, I'd see a lot of fans that are really excited to have Matt Shaw be the starting third baseman for the Chicago Cubs come July and August. And I just, I think if that happens, like that's a faster timeline than Nico Horner. That's a wildly, like that's a wild Zach Neto level pace to the way in which he's called up. That's fast, man. I think that like really for me, if we see Matt Shaw get his cup of coffee, cup of coffee in Chicago come September, we should be ecstatic about that. We should love that Matt Shaw is in Chicago in 2024 at all. Um, I have more of a 2025 timeline. I think there's a possibility we see him in, in, in Chicago in uh, September. And I, I, like I've said with Alcantara, I've said with other guys, with Owen Casey, once you reach double A as a top prospect or as a 40-man roster guy, who knows when we see you in Chicago? A, a hot stretch could get you in Chicago by midseason, like some people are hoping. I'm just putting a, expectations where like, I just don't expect to see that timeline given for Matt Shaw. I would like to see a much more deliberate development path where you're not worried about, is he going to stall out and like have to be sent back down to the minor leagues after in, in 2025 or 2026, let's call it Matt Shaw when the time is appropriate for both the team and for Matt Shaw. But I think overall, like remember we're entering Matt Shaw's first full professional season in 2024. Anything we get from him, anything like that resembles that 2023 campaign is downright crazy any action we see in Chicago is downright crazy. Just love what you enjoy what you're seeing from Matt Shaw in 2024 because it could be fun and he could be a piece in the Chicago Cubs organization and at that major league level for a long, long time. So 
Uh, thank you guys for tuning in and learning a little bit more about Matt Shaw. If you have comments, uh, send them in below. I want to hear what you guys think about Matt Shaw and what, where, you, when you expect to see him in Chicago, because I know there's a lot of differing opinions. Give your comments down below. Give this a like if you could. If you're looking for more prospect profiles, like I said, you can find those here on the Northside Bound YouTube page. There are more coming. More profiles coming. We'll see Moises Ballesteros and James Trianto still to come for sure. Uh, be sure to give the uh, YouTube page a subscription and click that little button to alert you when more videos come out and you can pay more attention to the prospect profiles of those players to come. So thank you guys so, so much for tuning in and we'll talk to you guys soon.